USA, here we come. We're going to be in nine cities in America. Nine whole cities. cities. So, we're in Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Maryland, New York, uh, this is <laughs> Dallas. Oh, no. Uh, I give up. We're going to be in nine cities. <laughs> we're going to be in nine cities. That's it. That, that. Ohio, Boston, Atlanta, Listen. Chicago. We'll be in a city near, near you. you. All right. Even if I can't remember the names <laughs> right now, just go we'll out there and get cities. your tickets. So don't say, oh, you buy, you're you not coming to my state or my street. No. Wow. Come to the city nearest yes, to you. Too. There's no excuse. We are flying. Uh, literally two days <laughs> yeah. to get to you so please um, make your way out there it'll mean a lot to us and you'll be blessed yeah. all right you can get your tickets at www.ldmwithpkto.com or you can reach out of our numbers all right so look forward to seeing you united states yes we thought we do we love you to this video and to my YouTube channel. My name is Kings Lekonkwo and I'm coming live today from Atlanta, <laughs> from Atlanta, United States. And we have a special, special guest and a special topic. All right. So today we're talking about seven things women need to know. All right. Seven things women need to know. And I have no other but my friend and brother all out here in the United States and Atlanta. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome <laughs> Stefan Speaks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be here. And because we both love women <laughs> you know, in a positive way, <laughs> and, and we speak to women a lot. So we decided today to just say, hey, what are seven things we think women need to know? What are seven things? Women need to know. So before he starts, don't forget, we have Super Chat now. So this means you can support what we do. So click it even while you're watching this um, video and be a blessing to us. And don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, and other things that we need to do. All right. So, uh, Stefan, what are, I know you speak to millions and millions of women, <laughs> and I do the same too. And in all fairness, um, for those of us in this kind of line of work, we generally interact with them. Yeah. That would do my men for some reason don't, don't like to talk about my <laughs> as much. All right. As much. So, uh, seven things women need to know. What would you go off with first? The first thing is that men do want relationships. Mm. Like I think, and I'm going to add, they even, a lot of them want marriage as well. Yes. I think in today's world, not just in today's world, I think a lot of women's personal experiences lead them to believe men don't want relationships. Men don't want serious, don't want to be serious. What they're overlooking is the fact that the reality is that even when a man wants a relationship, until he finds that woman that he feels is the one, mm -hmm. many still want to date and interact with other women. Yes. So he may be dating you. He may want to kick it with you, but he doesn't want to be serious with, with you. you. That that does not mean men don't want relationships. relationships. And the reason why it's important to understand that difference is because you start believing that men don't want it. Well, now you'll either start accepting men who won't give, give it, it. Yeah. and you won't be able to receive it from the man who is looking for one. All right. You'll start giving off the wrong energy. You'll start being more jaded and negative. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand, no, it exists. But the vast majority of people we meet are not for us. So I always say you can meet 100 men tomorrow. 99 of them aren't for you. OK, but that doesn't change the fact that there's still good ones out there. There's mm -hmm. still serious ones out there. You have to get out of this this mindset that that does not exist. And I and I even add marriage because I think. In today's world where you are hearing more men on the internet saying there is no point in marriage, they don't want marriage, marriage is too risky for men, we tend to forget that the in today's world, the minority can look like the majority. Yeah. All right? So when I speak to men in real life, I'm meeting men who are looking to find that one woman, who value marriage, who is still important to them. But again, those guys aren't going to be on the internet trolling every video and commenting yeah. all the time yeah. saying our marriage is trash. Yeah. So it creates this false false perception of what's really going on out there. So I just want women to understand, no, it still exists. Men do want it, but you have to position yourself properly to receive it. 
Wow, that is phenomenal. That's what, and, and that actually leads to my own point, which is that standards still matter. Mm. All right, standards still matter. Because, because of this mindset, a lot of women now think, I just need to cope or stay with whatever I see, yeah. which is what you mentioned. But standards still matter because all men don't treat women the same. Mm-hmm. All right, Men don't treat all women the same way. That's what I've learned. Men don't treat all women the same way. So a man can literally be wasting a wo- this woman's time, uh, you know, date her for four years, five years, and not commit to anything serious mm-hmm. and meet another person and get married to her in four months. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so women need to learn that men don't treat all women the same. Mm-hmm. So you, if you have standards, you can protect yourself and help you discern a man that is seeing you as as a lifetime partner or as a toy. Yeah. So it is your standards that will protect you. Don't just go with the flow. Set your standard. Boys won't stress out themselves, you know, just to have you, especially if they don't really want you. In fact, patience and time is how you tell a guy that he's here for the long term. When guys are not there for the long term, they are usually in a rush. They want to get on the bed quickly. They want to get your money quickly. They want to do things very quickly. They have no patience. But usually people that are there for the long term are patient mm-hmm. because, hey, they're looking at it from a long-term perspective. So standards still matter. Men don't treat all women the same. Men actually learn from you how they can treat you. All right? Most times they are not sure if you would if you would take this kind of thing. And they learn from you that this is okay. There's a, there, there are some ladies you can't speak to rudely twice. If you do it once, <laughs> they will send a message to you in no uncertain terms that you can't talk to me like this. But when you when you accept certain things, you know, with the hope that maybe if I if I pretend I'm okay with everything going on, maybe he will come around, you know, and marry me or he'll come around and commit to me. No, set standards. Standards are for your protection. Standards helps you screen and discern the guys that are serious and the ones that are not. All right, I don't know why you're throwing something like that. Yeah, and I agree with that. I, I think that's extremely important that women have to hold strong to their standards. And, I, and I'll say this, understand there's a difference between standards and expectations. So I believe, I don't believe in having expectations because to me, I can't expect anyone to do anything because everyone has a choice and they can choose to do whatever they choose to do. But I can have my standard that says, if you don't meet this requirement, I'm not entertaining you, yes. all right? And so what happens is when you don't meet my expectations, I'm not hurt and disappointed because I never expected it. Yeah. I understand that as a human being, you might fall short. Sure. So it's okay. It just shows me that we're not good for each other. All right. But I will still have my standards that you have to meet. So I think it's important because I do think a lot of women are going into certain relationships or even not even a relationship. They're going into certain dates with expectations that when they are not met, they're not angry. They're hurt. They're resentful. And it's like, no, you shouldn't do that. You have to go in with an open mind. Understand this can go in various directions. Your focus should be, are you showing up as your best self? And if you end up seeing something special there, cool. If not, we keep it moving to the next situation. Okay. So number three. Number three. Let me say in advance, (laughs) this might trigger some of you. Oh, no. I say this with love. All right. Hear what I'm saying. Don't react. Number three is, men aren't tricking you. You're tricking yourself. Mm. So... I'm a firm believer that women's intuition is extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. I've yet to meet a woman that said her intuition was wrong. Fear might have led her wrong. Her logic might have led her wrong, led her wrong, but her intuition was not Not inaccurate. And so what's happening is you'll hear these women say, oh, well, you don't know these men. They, they act all good in the beginning. Then they change on you. And it's like, no, 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 no. Every time I've sat down with, let's just use divorcees. Every time I sat down with divorcees and I asked them, did you not see red flags before you married this man? They will all admit yes. Yes, All right. But they chose to ignore it, rationalize past it, all make excuses for it. Mm -hmm. And then when it all blows up in their face, you can't now say, oh, it's the man who tricked me. No, you did not listen to your intuition. You did not listen to your spirit. You did not let God guide you in that situation. We have this tendency where we'll pray and ask God for a relationship. And then once something's in our face, it's like, okay, God, I got it. 
Mm-hmm. I'll take care of it from here. <laughs> right? Or, or the only time we go back to God is to say, Lord, make it work. Or if it's not for me, please remove it. All right. Rather than know what do you want me to do in this, God? Mm-hmm. How should I proceed? You know what I'm saying? Is this person for me so that I understand the responsibility I have in the actions that I need to take in managing this situation? So again, Women have to understand, and, and I say this not to trigger them, but to empower them in knowing, listen, when you accept that you are seeing it for what it is, but you're not listening to yourself, you will no longer fall for the traps. You will now escape all the ne- the trauma and the damage that would occur that has occurred to so many women because they keep tricking themselves into believing they should give this man a chance, that this can work out, that this could be the guy for them. They're trying to validate their desire to make this work or validate the energy and time they've already put into this man rather than accept, no, he's not for you. Let him go. Move on to something better. That is that is that is powerful. So they should listen more to the intuition. Yeah. Yes, into and and to me, your intuition is your spirit. Yeah. So spirit. it's it's all the same thing. And they have to listen to it because it's there. They know. Yeah, I, I, Women know in the first conversation, vision. this guy's not it. Yeah. Yeah. Then the pressure comes up. So they're thinking, oh, I'm getting old. Exactly. Uh, all my friends have a relationship. Yeah. But some with a date. Exactly. You know, maybe I'm being too picky. Let me give yeah. him a chance. My f- parents like it. There's so, so many, many things, things that push this woman into continuously trying with someone that she knows deep inside. And this yeah, is not it. Yeah. So, so, so the, listen to your intuition. Most time, and women have very sensitive spirits. They're, yes. very, they're, they're very intuitive. Yes. Very, very. Yeah. Yeah. So, so hey, that's a good one. <laughs> Number four. Number four. Hmm. I, I want to say you are more than beautiful. You are more than beautiful. Now, first of all, I said more than beautiful because number one, you are beautiful. Every woman is beautiful. And that's what you need to learn. Um, because we're trying to, most women are trying to fit into a model of, of what beauty is. Mm-hmm. And you need to understand that I've, I've been on this job for a long time. I've seen people marry, you know, people that other people will feel, oh, this is not a beautiful woman. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> ladies need to learn that Guys don't just pick a woman based on how she looks. Mm-hmm. A lot of guys also pick women because of how she makes him feel. Yeah. So ladies need to learn that because Stefan, there's no reason why somebody that makes that produces makeup should be richer than me and you. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason is because women think that you know all these things, the hair and the makeup is what you know I need to attract a man. That might be true, but you also need something to keep. Mm-hmm. The man, and that's where we come in because we're we're covering a broader spectrum. But but these guys that do this makeup and they're just focusing on the outward and, and they're richer than us. Just like, <laughs> look into that. So, but what I'm trying to say is that you are more than beautiful. So, first of all, every woman is beautiful. Um, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, uh, just because you think you, you don't look like a, a popular musician or a popular uh, model doesn't mean that a man will not find you attractive. So that's one. You are beautiful. Everybody God made is beautiful. There's nobody God has made that is not beautiful. Now, this does not mean you should not do things to improve how you look, Mm -hmm. which you are doing already, I believe, but you must start from the point of view that you're beautiful, not not, not from the point of view that you're ugly and you need to, you know, do do so many things, all right? Number two, there are two aspects to a woman's attractiveness. So there's the beauty and the charm. So the charm is what I talked about, about how you make the man feel. So the Bible talks about it in Proverbs 31, was trying to tell men that beauty fades and charm is deceitful. So he mentioned two things. He didn't say beauty is bad. He just says beauty can fade. All right. Um, some women will not remain the same figure all through their lifetime. Especially after kids or different things happen. So beauty can actually fade. Charm can actually deceive you. But they mentioned two things, beauty and charm. So there's beauty, which has to do a lot with the physical attributes. But there's charm, which has to, which has to do with your behavior, your demeanor. Mm-hmm. So men are also attracted to how you make them feel. Yeah. And you see, you might not be able to change your physical attributes so much, but you can change the aura you carry. You can change what happens in an atmosphere when you come in. You can change how a man feels when he talks with you. So things like developing your mind, things like having a better attitude, things like healing from trauma, all right? Because sometimes you notice that a lot of women speak out of heart. 
So a lot of women are actually fighting. They are fighting the present man in their life, but he's not really the one they're fighting. They're fighting all the men <laughs> <laughs> that have hurt them all their lives. Yeah. They're fighting their dad yeah. that left. Yeah. So they're bringing that trauma into, into the relationship. So you, you need to understand that there are two aspects to you that makes you attractive. There's the beauty, which is largely physical. But there's the charm or the charisma, which is largely internal. That has to do with your attitude, your, your way of seeing things, your way of responding to things, the atmosphere you create around you. And that is largely also tied to how you see yourself. If you approach every interaction like I'm an inferior person, I'm not wanted, you know, you're judging yourself by how your last relationship went, though that nobody wants me. Once you project that, you know, the Bible Bible talks about that, you know, people, um, um, you know, we're like grasshoppers in our eyes and so were we in their eyes. So it's important how you see yourself, how the, the kind of um, energy you bring mm-hmm. out is very important. Okay, so you are more than beautiful. You're beautiful, but you can also develop other aspects of you that also make you very attractive and create the right atmosphere. Um, so there's another one that might trigger some people. <laughs> You're on for the triggering today. You want to get a helmet. I'm going all the punches right now. <laughs> well, listen, all right. So the, the number five is stop worrying about what we tell men because that's not going to oh, save oh you. Oh, my God. Okay. Now, here's what I, I need women to understand. So let's let's use this analogy. Let's use it with a man, though. If I go to a man who's broke, doesn't have a job, and I say, listen, you know, you need to get out there and go work. work. You need to figure out how to get a job, right? And he says, well, there are no good jobs out there. You know, there's nothing available. What's the point, right? You need to, you need to go create better jobs for me, for me to go apply to. Would that be an acceptable answer for most people? No, because we know that, no, it's not that there's no acceptable jobs. If you acquire certain skills and training, you will then be able to be qualified to receive certain jobs. And no matter how many jobs are created or not, if you don't become a qualified candidate, you won't get hired. So when women say, well, you need to tell the men to do this and you need to tell the men because we're ready. It's like, no, no, no. If you as a woman do what you're supposed to do. And, and I say woman, but again, people who do what they're supposed to do get what they're supposed to get. So that's man or woman. So if you put in the work, no matter how bad you think it looks out there in the world, you're going to receive results. Plain and simple. I know women who they were struggling to meet men. They weren't having any luck with dating, but they were carrying a lot of masculine energy. Yeah. All right. They were very negative. We, we went through the healing process. They've learned to be more feminine. And they will tell you their life has completely changed. So in the same city that they swore, there's no men in this city or (laughs) none of the good ones are single or any of these things. Once they made the necessary changes, they started seeing things happen differently for them. So I think women get caught up in this idea of there's this shortage of good men Mm -hmm. or these men are not being taught correctly. And let me make it clear. I have a channel for men. I have books for men. So I am speaking to the men, but it doesn't matter if my channel had, because my thing is this, even if I got the message out to 10 million men and I made 10 million amazing, great husband material men, every woman is not going to get one. Yeah. The only women who will be able to get one of those guys is the woman who does her work and pours into herself to be qualified to receive and nurture that kind of a man. So it doesn't matter what we're saying to them. It's what are you doing in your life? That's the only thing that's going to save you right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you can't be worried about this person. Because if you're worried about them, again, it's like the person who blames everything around them um, yeah. and not looks at themselves in the mirror. Yeah. You're not going to get ahead in life that way. So it isn't to say men shouldn't be talked to because they are. And another thing to point out is, and this is why, to me, when, when women say, well, why you keep telling us this and that and what we have to do? And it's like, listen, so let's go back to that analogy. I make 10 million great men. There's still hundreds of millions of men out there who could be bad for you. For you yes. If you don't learn how to navigate through the bad men, you'll never get to the good, good one. one. Yes. So you still have to learn the skills and the understanding that helps you not fall into certain traps, yeah. not get into dead end relationships, not let these men, well, not trick yourself rather than these men tricking you. OK, because if you don't uh, obtain that knowledge and those skills, you're going to be in the same negative cycle that other women who have not seen success have found themselves in. That is, that is phenomenal. And it's, it's something to come up for, especially for those of us that are 
um, vocal on social media and all that. Once we post something that has to do with women, all the women just jump on the page and they start saying things like, oh, you know, talk to the man. Why, why are we always talking to the man? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And he has he has answered that question. You know, that, that, that is not the issue. It's not a gender war. You know, and you hardly get that response from men. You hardly do a video for men and men just say, oh, talk to women. No, no, just just take take the take the lesson, learn from it. Um, and you don't need all the men. It's just one man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that you need to be bothered about. <laughs> all right. So so it's not a gender war, you know. And sometimes as as people that coach and do things online, sometimes we just get inspiration for women because we interact with women a lot. So mm-hmm. we can get five good topics to deal with, with women and just one for men. It happens. And sometimes we can get five for men. But you see, it's not we're not in a gender war. Yeah, exactly. We're not trying to, it's not gender equality kind of thing. All right. If we have good materials for you, um, just take it and apply it and you'll be better for it. Yeah. And, and understand, because this used to happen to me when I used to coach couples a lot. So I would I would coach the couples, but there would be sessions with them individually. Yeah. So when I'm speaking to the husband, he'll say to me, well, you're telling me to do this. How about you tell her? And I'm like, wait a minute, but I'm talking to you right now. When I talk to her, I tell her what she needs to do. And what's funny is when I talk to her, she says the same thing. Well, you're telling me to do this. Why don't you tell him? I'm like, wait a minute. I tell him, but I'm talking to you right now. So just like you said, take the lesson that's being presented to you. It's one thing if we're giving you bad information. Yeah. Okay. But if we're giving you proper, helpful information, stop worrying about, well, they're not doing this. They're not. What are you doing? That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So number six, be out there. All right. Be out there. Uh, The average man, like like he started with, really wants a serious relationship. Mm -hmm. And the average man even wants to impress a woman. That's Mm -hmm. the truth. (laughs) So be out there. You know, are you even available? Yes. Are you accessible all right <laughs> so are you available are you even where people can see you then are you accessible I, I i i tell people online if you're on social media for instance and your page is private and you are such it <laughs> i hate that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i search it because in the world we live in today online is the new mainland yes so people are no more limited by you know the three meter or 300 meter radius around mm-hmm. their house so people can meet you from anywhere in the world now in fact there's even people in your city that are of like mind, that will like somebody like you. You can even be next door neighbors and you've never met. Yeah. And you might meet online. So be active online. If you're a single person that is searching, a page cannot be on private. Mm-hmm. All right? I actually have a whole YouTube video titled Seven Mistakes Singles Make Online. All right? Your page being on private is one of it. Because nowadays, people check you out. All right? People check you out. And the, the, what I hear most times is, that, oh, if I, if I make my page open, I get all kinds of um, solicitations, all kinds of messages. I said, but see, the wall protecting you from the negative ones is also stopping the positive. Exactly. That same wall is yes. <laughs> cutting out the kind of guy you want to meet. So, hey, uh, um, let your page be open. Let people see you and post the right kind of things. Yeah. There are people that don't actually post anything on their page. Post your picture. Where you see? <laughs> Don't post just Bible verses. Now, yeah. to post Bible verses, that can be all you post. Don't yeah. post just um, uh, uh, meals, what you're eating. We need to see you. Post yourself. Post your picture. Nice pictures, okay? Not the one where you're not uh, made up. Nice. <laughs> nice pictures and post different kinds of pictures. If you're the kind of person that you're interested in different things, let's get a feel of who you are from that your online page, all right? Be active out there. And when you're on pages you like, be be active. So, you know, most times we, we go through a page, we see a nice video, a nice content, and we just imagine that our response in the mind and we don't write it, we just scroll past. No, 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 mm-hmm. write it. On those kind of pages, you can meet like-minded people, all right? I have, I have one of my people that got married like that. Mm-hmm. You know, someone came to her church, church you know, and the person's a worship minister, popular one, and came to her church. And she just videoed it and put it on her story. And the, the music artist reposted it on her own story. Oh, wow. Then someone else that follows that music artist saw the video and said, oh, who is this person that posted and clicked? And they found that they were both in the same state. Mm-hmm. You see, they never met each other, but they, are both, they both live in Texas. Mm-hmm. You see, and they started talking from there. And today they are married. In fact, she just gave birth a few days ago. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, so so these things are real. Yeah. All right. So yeah. um, be out there, be active where people can actually see you. All right. Um, don't hide yourself in the house. All right. Uh, uh, be available, be accessible. Now, I understand a lot of guys who don't like my also uh, be in the picture, but hey, you can screen through that quickly and you know, block the people you need to block. But hey, 
learn to be available so that people can actually, you know, talk to you, be out there, interact there. And I'm sure there's someone that will find you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I agree with that. I, 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 I can't tell you how many times I've told women, stop having your page on private. Right. It's the most annoying thing. <laughs> and you know, the, the crazy thing, I've had women try to slide in my DMs, mm-hmm. talk to me with their page yeah, on private. private. And then even worse, their picture is not a real picture of them. Yeah. It's like a cartoon so, character so, or something. Yeah. And then be mad at me when I don't take them up on their offer to go on a date or something. It's like, I can't even see who you are. Like, come on now. (laughs) It's crazy. All right. So number seven Seven. is stop letting friends and family scare you. Mm. Now, we can go two ways with that. One, stop letting friends and family dictate who you should date and who you should not date. But when I say scare you is because what I think women don't realize is that When they're hearing all these horror stories from their friends and family of the men they were with, in most situations, you're not getting the full story. All right. What I've learned is that most women and men do it, too, but in a different way. Women tend to leave out the parts that make them look bad, nah, okay? Bad. <laughs> All right. So they're not going to say how, like, if this man did something, let's say he cursed them out, she may not say the part how she he did, did something to trigger, trigger him yeah. and bring that out of him, okay? Yeah. Men leave out the parts that make them lose respect. Right. So a man might tell his homeboy, yeah, this girl, you know, uh, she broke up with me. She didn't appreciate what I was doing for her. But you're not telling him that you were being very insecure, that you were crying at her door the other day, begging for her to stay. You're not saying that part because that makes you look weak. That makes you lose respect. So a lot of times we're not hearing the full story. All right. And for any woman that questions that, I always say, think about a situation you ever had with a woman. So let's say a woman has had a run-in with another woman and they got into it or whatever. And there's a mutual friend. Right. And I said, whenever you hear the story she told the mutual friend, is it ever the full story? No. <laughs> this, oh, so if she's leaving out details in that situation, what do you think she's doing with the man situation? All right. So it, it creates this perception that men are horrible. Men are not, like, I, I hate to use this one, but I have to use it. Even when women say, you know, let's say the woman got cheated on and they'll say, I did everything for this man and he still cheated. 99% of the time, that is not a true. All right. Now, this is not to excuse cheating or make it okay. It's to simply say you're not giving the full details. It's almost like and I'll just give one example of this kind of scenario, but I'll use a man. A man will say, I did everything and she still cheated on me. But the whole time you emotionally neglected her. All right. You made her feel very insecure. You were constantly looking at other women online and sending them messages. So. Now you only want to highlight that she cheated on you and act like you did everything, but you didn't. You created a very unhealthy environment. Again, it doesn't make it okay, but you can't leave that out because now people don't understand that it's the the issues in these horror stories are not because men are horrible. It's because you were dealing with a man you didn't belong with. All right. And I have to even go a step further. This same thing happens when it comes to divorce and kids. Mm. I always say to people, what damages the kids more than anything is not the actual divorce. It's the the lies being told about the divorce. So basically, if I'm a child and I've been fed by my parents this whole time that they love each other, and then one day they come and tell me we're getting a divorce. Well, as a kid, how do I process that? Because to me, I start to believe that you can't trust love, that you can love someone and all of a sudden they can be gone in a day. Mm -hmm. All right. But that's not the truth. truth. The truth is you guys were on this weren't on the same page years before the divorce was official, but yeah. that you decided you were your separate ways. You guys had bigger issues way before this time, but you hid all that from the child, which I understand hiding it during it. But once we get to that point of divorce, if we're not honest with them, they don't have an accurate picture of what happened. So now, rather than walking away thinking, I can't trust love, people will fall in love out of nowhere, the child can then learn from you and say, oh, this is what happens when you get with someone you never loved to begin mm-hmm. with. 
This is what happens when you let your parents pressure you into this marriage mm-hmm. and you never want to marry this person. Mm-hmm. Now we can learn the good lessons from it rather than have this messed up perception because we're buying into these half stories and letting that make us scared about love and relationships. That is phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is good. Hey, hey. All right. So uh, we'll, we'll throw it half, half into it. Um, I also like to tell women to um, make your own money. <laughs> make your own money it gives you options you know a lot of women settling for men just because you know she can't afford to leave mm-hmm. you know so she's staying in a relationship where she's been badly treated if you can make your own money it gives you options you can you can choose to stay or not to stay with a certain kind of person and and you know and that way you can even decide to stay with a guy that is still trying to you know, build up his life but i see many women just want to follow the money you know just mm-hmm. want a guy that has money you know? You need to deal with that mindset. Um, some guys might not look like it today, but they'll be it, mm-hmm. you know, in a few years, especially like with the right environment. And they'll go there. So, hey. But I want to add to that point real quick. Mm-hmm. So women have to be careful that in getting your own money, do not become attached to the lifestyle to where now you have less flexibility to the type of man mm-hmm. you'll accept. Yeah. And what I mean by that is it's, it's, Certain life, if, if that's true, the lifestyle you want to live, so be it, right? But I think what happens is some women, let's say, for example, you start making your own money, but you take it all the way far. And now you're making 150000 And let me, t- to add more context to what I'm saying, because I don't want people to misunderstand. Mm-hmm. If you know that the way you're getting this money is not something that you want to do for the rest of your life, you have to remind yourself of that. Because what's happening is you start making this one fifty. Let's say she becomes a lawyer. She doesn't want to really be a lawyer. She just figured, I need to get my money. I want to make my career. People told me I'm good at being a lawyer. Let me do that, mm-hmm. right? She makes 150 now. She has her vacation. She's living her lifestyle. But she's waiting for the day to walk away from this job. What happens now is she can't accept a man making less than, let's say, 200000 Because to her, I need him to make enough to sustain my lifestyle that I can leave this job and still keep living like this. And he has a little extra for himself. So it's not that that's why women are so sticklers on. He has to make as much or more than me, because for many of them, they don't want they don't plan to stay in their career forever. So if you know you don't have those intentions that this is not where you feel like you belong, this is in your purpose, then you have to make that money and understand, Okay. Let me use this as a tool to have that flexibility and not be swayed by a man's money or not be in a difficult position. But let not, but don't put myself in a trap where now I can only accept a certain type of man financially because I become so attached to what yeah. I've gotten yeah. through this career and this current financial lifestyle. Right. I right. hope they understand what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. <laughs> hey, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you for um watching this video and thank you, Stefan. This was amazing. Absolutely. This was amazing. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Again. <laughs> thank you. Always this a pleasure. Good. This was good. Hey, so hey, don't forget you can use super chat, like, um, support, subscribe, and all those things. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. So God bless. USA, here we come. We're gonna be in nine cities in America. Nine whole cities. cities. So we're in Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Maryland, New York, uh, Houston, <laughs> Dallas. Ah uh, no, uh, I give up. We're gonna be in nine cities. <laughs> we're gonna be in nine. That's that. It's not Ohio, Boston, Atlanta, Houston. Chicago. Will be in a city near, near you. you. All right. Even if I can't remember the names <laughs> right now, just go out there nice and get city. your tickets. So don't say, oh, you buy, you're not coming to my state or my street. No. Yeah. Come to the city nearest yes, to you. Too. There's no excuse. We are flying uh, literally two days <laughs> yeah. to get to you. So please um, make your way out there. It'll mean a lot to us and you'll be blessed. Yeah. All right. You can get your tickets at www.ldmwithpktor.com or and reaching out for our numbers. All right? So look forward to seeing you in the United States. Yes, we shall. We love you.